Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Wednesday, February the 21st. This morning I'd like to talk about the DSC Channel 70 uh, VHF uh, signal. In previous videos I looked at um, receiving this signal using uh, multi-PSK and SDR Angel. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, be able to uh, decode the signal uh, on the Raspberry Pi. And as far as I know, I haven't found um, a decoder that works on uh, uh, Linux and the Raspberry Pi. So what I thought I'd do is I'd try to uh, uh, develop a decoder myself. So um, the uh, DSC signal uses FSK. I started working with FSK uh, a long, long time ago uh, in connection with common carrier applications and telephony. I worked on um, an FSK, <coughs> FSK two-tone ringer for telephony. And back in those days, uh, DTMF um, used um, uh, several frequencies, so I'm kind of familiar with FSK. It has many advantages. Um, one of them is that it's constant amplitude, it's very noise resistant, uh, and it's a very robust modulation technique. Anyways, uh, in the blog post I've got all the details, but here I have um, it's like about a two-minute capture window. There's a local coastal station, so basically I'm using SDR Sharp to receive the IQ and the audio uh, of this coast station. Uh, I didn't have the squelch on, so there's a lot of noise here, but you can see these bursts here. This is where there was a transmission from the coastal station. So if I um, magnify this, um, you can see in here, that's where the actual packet, the DSC packet is. Okay, so that's where the uh, uh, squelch kicked off and um, the signal was received. Now over here, uh, what I've done is I've cleaned up the packet and I've um, amplified it. So this is my WAV file. It was originally at, um, I think it was 3750, something like that, uh, sampling frequency. So I also changed the sampling frequency to 48 kilohertz. Now, to decode the signal uh, in the blog post here, I've got some specifications. I looked up um, in various textbooks on <clears throat> decoding BFSK. So for the DSC signal, the VCO is centered at 1700, the mark is at 2100, and the space is at 1300. Separation is 800 hertz. Data rate is 1200 bits per second. Now there's quite a few conditions here for orthogonal decoding, and that is when you reinsert the F mark it lines up in position with the transmitted F mark and same thing with F space. So that way when you multiply the two tones together you get a cosine of the difference in the sum. The cosine of the difference is a, is, um, a DC value of 0.5 and then the, uh, the cosine of the sum is double the frequency. So these are conditions for orthogonal decoding. For the uh, DSC signal it doesn't meet those conditions. So you have to use um, a non-coherent type of uh, demodulation. So down here I've got several um, sort of block diagrams. Here, using coherent detection, you take your BFS, FSK signal and you multiply with the uh, mark and the space. Um, you sum the two together. Uh, you average it with a low-pass filter and then you sample and hold and threshold. That's the coherent detection. For the non-coherent detection, um, I sort of summarized here two types of decoders. I'm, I'm, this is not exhaustive. I'm sure there are other ones that work perfectly well, but these are the ones that I found. One of them uses a simple bandpass filter. So basically your signal comes in here. So the, the F mark excites this bandpass filter and the F space excites this one. You have envelope detectors. You subtract the two, do a sample and hold and threshold. So that's one of them. And the one that I'm using currently seems to work the best is an I and Q um, decoder. So basically you take your input waveform, so you have the mark, you've got a cosine and a sine, and for the space you've got a cosine and a sine. The idea here is, is that they don't line up. They're not uh, coherent. They don't line up, but if you add the contribution of a cosine and a sine somewhere between those two, you'll get a good response if it was a mark, and the same thing down here if it was a space, then adding these two responses together um, 
will give you a good response. And then you sum them and then subtract them and go to the threshold. So that's the one I'm using right now. Psychos model that I'm using. So the first thing you do is once you've uh, got your wave file in um, Audacity, incidentally, the, the Psychos model is an after the fact decoder. Ultimately, what I'd like to do is uh, write some Python routines to put this into Raspberry Pi so this all works with the RTL SDR and decodes asynchronously uh, in real time. But this is sort of an after the fact type of decoder just to establish the uh, architecture. So the first thing you do is you read in the WAV file using the editor and you create a structure which is a dat file which takes the sample and the um, sample time and reads it into Psychos. So there's your uh, WAV file. And then what you do is you go to Psychos and there's the decoder. So there's your WAV file coming in here. Now the detector is actually buried in the super block. So if you look at the super block, there you have the four mixers. There's the uh, <coughs> cosine mark and the sine mark, and there's the cosine space and the sine space. You uh, multiply with the input. Uh, you average over one bit, and then you do the um, uh, adding the I and the Q responses for F mark, adding the I and Q responses for F space, and then you subtract them. So that's what's in the super block. And then you sample and hold and quantize. So let's look at some of the waveforms here. So this is what's going on. Um, let's look at this guy. Um, this is a scope inside the super block. So what it's doing is it's looking at. This is your wave file coming in here. There's your um, cosine F mark and there's your sine F mark. There's your cosine F space and your sine F space. And then this waveform, <clears throat> this waveform is, uh, the, that's your um, output of the I and the Q for um, the mark and the I and the Q for space subtracted. That's the output waveform. And then these are the individual waveforms here. So this is the... Um, sum of the uh, response for F mark, and that's the um, cosine F mark, and that's the sine F mark, <clears throat> and that's the sum of the response for F space, and that's the cosine F space and the sine F space. That's those waveforms. And then um, this guy here is your decoded output. So let's look at the end here. Just give us an idea. So that's the uh, output of the um, all those mixers. So you can see when you have a positive spike, that indicates that there was a 1 or an F mark. And simply when there was a negative 1, there was a space. And that's the original waveform. And you can see that there's the 1s and zeros, and they naturally uh, line up here. It seems to be working fairly well. Um, as I say, this is the first... Uh, First installment on a decoder, it's not complete, there's a lot more to do, but anyways, just to get the architecture straight. And then the last uh, scope here is just, uh, let's look at the end of that. So there we go there, there's the input waveform and you can see down here, um, these are the uh, spikes showing you um, where the ones and the zeros are occurring. So anyways, just in summary then, so this is um, my first pass at a decoder for the DSC channel 70. It's an after the fact a decoder once you've recorded the WAV file, but it just uh, is used to establish a structure and ultimately, hopefully I'll be able to develop um, a real time decoder using uh, Python that works on the um, uh, Raspberry Pi. So that's the objective.